So many activities became virtually off limits when the pandemic started. Safety measures meant cutting out the gym and other activities. Some outdoor team sports also suffered, but one sport that thrived all the way through the pandemic was golf. That's right, and I recently spoke to a local golfer instructor, uh, John Eisman, about the big boom in the golf industry. This is this almost the biggest boom that we've seen. John Eisman owns Eisman Golf Academy, which operates at two courses in Northern Virginia, Laurel Hill and Twin Lakes. The first big boom he saw came in the 90s with the emergence of Tiger Woods. It was cool. He made it a different sport. Um, it wasn't this privileged type of sport. But a quarter of a century later, the pandemic shutdown caused a different kind of spike. According to the National Golf Foundation, more than 3 million new golfers nationwide hit the course for the very first time. Our business was up almost 300% within that time period. A huge growth in, in, in more uh, junior golfers, women getting out to play and, and to get into the game a little bit, and more families. And we don't think it's going to go anywhere. Right there's fine. Each golfer has a story, like Anthony Bradshaw, who first picked up clubs as a teen and got back on the course in his mid-20s. Found the sport. Didn't love it as much and then found it again and now I can't stop playing. Now it's addicting, yeah, now I play pretty much every day. While 18-year-old Owen Taylor dropped baseball and found another sport to love. Now he hopes to play on a college golf team. And one of John's longtime students, Rylan Shim, calls golf his sanctuary in the pandemic. You know, when everything else was closed down, I knew I had a spot here at Laurel that I could come and practice and hang out with people. Now, Rylan has a bright future ahead of him as he heads to the University of Florida on a golf scholarship. He's thrilled about the growth in his sport. And I've made so many great relationships with people that I probably would have never made you know, relationships with through golf, and I think it's awesome, and everybody should be able to have that opportunity. So many of the people who discovered golf during the pandemic have stuck with it that John is hiring more help and expanding his instruction studios. They want the technology. They want to experience launch monitors. We're expanding to another studio right next door, so that's going to be 2,600 square feet. Um, we'll have two indoor bays, nice big players lounge area, video conferencing in there, all the tech that we're going to put in there. So. I think really people are even getting deeper into lessons. John says the philosophy of golf instruction has done a 180 from learning to do things a certain way. Oh, I can see myself. To learning which movements work best for your body. 50 years ago, it was all grip, stance, ball position, posture. I, I think everybody is so unique with those things. My philosophy would be, how does an individual move? What do they like to do during that movement and how does that influence the club? We then use the technology to see that movement and we'll find out if it's efficient or we'll find out if there's a different type of movement that would make them square the face up, hit better contact. If you haven't linked into golf yet, John has one key point. So does that mean there's hope for even a terrible golfer? <laughs> no one's a terrible golfer. I, I think it's just a matter of your learning curve and your learning process and having the time really to get out there and do it. Oh, it was great talking with John about this, and many are still getting out there. In fact, not only are courses booked solid for weeks out, equipment sales are surging, and John says that people are waiting for their clubs at least six months right now. And he also tells me that he's planning for this boom to be his new norm in business, and the golf industry appears to feel the same way. So 